Joining us on the line now is Jason Smith, the US actor who stars in everything from being Wendell in Rectify to, of course, recently starring in AMC's The Walking Dead as Gavin. First things first, Jason, how are you? I'm doing fine, sir. How are you? I'm good, thank you very much. I've mentioned a few things there, and I will say to listeners that there will be spoilers in this interview. So if you haven't caught up with The Walking Dead, please do so before you listen to this interview, because we might spoil a few things for you. Yes. <laughs> yes so <a> good idea. <laughs> Jason, I just want to ask firstly about the character of Gavin, because he's a really strange one. He, he seems to be one of the saviours in The Walking Dead that you don't really think is that evil straight away. He, he's obviously has done despicable things, but he, he doesn't seem to hold the same sort of motivations as some of the others. No, he's definitely, uh, you know, I don't know. We've, I've talked about this before. He got absorbed into that group somehow. We don't know exactly, but he's good at managing. He's good at organizing. He gets things done. But what we discovered in this last episode is that that has failed him, but his true colors finally came out as to where his loyalties lie. But he's not one for violence. He's not one for vegan's ways, but there's a little bit of cowardice in there because he's like, well, these people keep me safe, and every now and then I have to do something despicable, but better them than me. So I think that's what we found out this week. Because, as you said, he's not really apologetic for what he's done, but there are a few times in the episode of this week where Ezekiel says things, for instance, saying, you know, it's never too late to change Gavin. And, and I think Ezekiel really, right. really does think that there is that scope to change, doesn't he? Yeah, there's a, a weird relationship between Ezekiel and Gavin that, you know, there's a mutual respect, a lot less respect on Ezekiel's part for Gavin, I think, <laughs> but he showed that he, you know, it's like, all right, buddy, all right, buddy, let's, let's back, you know, back away from the edge of the cliff here. Gavin's just too freaked out to heed that call, doesn't really see potential for any way other than Negan's way. Now, going back to this episode... Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. But mm-hmm. but this episode that we've just seen, Jason, obviously Gavin, unfortunately, dies in this episode. What was your reaction when you found out that Gavin was going to be killed off? Well, I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of funny, you know, as you, you may have heard, Scott Gimple always calls people when this is going to happen to let them know it's happening and when it's going to happen and why it's happening. And we were in the midst of shooting my last day on episode 8 of this season, which was the mid-season finale, and I'm sitting there just kind of relaxing, and we had finally finished shooting an all-night affair, turned my phone back on, and the first voicemail is Scott Gimple, and I'm like, damn it! (laughs) (laughs) Because he's not really going to be calling me for any other reason. And I listened to the voicemail, and he just said, hey, give me a call. I'm like, oh, man. Oh. So I showed it to Kari, who plays Ezekiel, and he's like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so I called him. I, I gave it a day. I called him, and he was very nice and explained everything. You know, and this is how these things go. And, you know, eventually the war is going to end. You know these people are going to have to go, and this is just how it goes. Like a lot of the fans, and maybe I read too much fan mail, I believe that Gavin was going to be able to see the light and make a change and make a turn and maybe join the, the good side and was hoping for that. But at the end, it didn't work out that way. It's Josh Michael, who plays Jared, he and I are friends here in Atlanta, and we're both natives to Georgia, which is where Atlanta and Sonoya and where we shoot. And we were both like, look, if we can get more than two episodes, everything else is gravy. And so we, you know, to have been in eight episodes or seven episodes, he's got about as many we're very, very happy and very, very grateful to have been a part of this whole story. And what is it like being a part of that cast? Because you hear rumours from kind of Walking Dead actors when they do other interviews saying that when a character is killed off, there's something like a kind of meal at the end of it where there's a death meal. There's also apparently a very good kind of atmosphere on the set. I mean, how have you found it? Is it, is it a pretty special cast to work with? Yes. The thing is, you know, and I don't mean this in any kind of derogatory way, but my character is a secondary character. It's not the main cast. And so these meals and dinners and things you hear about is for the, are, are the main cast people. They do that sort of thing. There was no the death dinner for Gavin. Oh, no. Um, there have been some... There, there, well, I mean, I just want to... You know, I'm not trying to ruin anything. It's just the <laughs> way things are. There's 50 people in that cast at one point at the beginning of this season. And there's been a lot of death this season. There's going to be more, I'm sure. And it's just, and it also depends on timing and where people are and things like that. 
I also live here. At the end of the day of shooting, I get in my car, I drive home and, and get in my own bed and, and my house here in Atlanta. So I'm not hanging out at the hotel. I'm not traveling with these folks. And again, it's not like I'm upset about it. It's just the reality of things. I'm not included in a lot of that sort of stuff because I'm not hanging out with those folks all the time. One thing I was going to say is I have, though, what was really nice was I was in Pensacola at a convention this, at the Pensacon in Pensacola, Florida this weekend. Cooper Andrews, Carrie Cahill, and Seth Gilliam, we all went out to this bar where there was a screening of the show Sunday night with a hundred some odd fans, and it could not have been greater and nicer because all the folks there gave me a standing ovation at the end of the episode and bought me drinks. So I think that was better than a dinner with a few folks. So I kind of got that later. And by accident, but it was wonderful. No, definitely. And I think one thing I've noticed as well, particularly after Gavin died, you check on social media, and there's a lot of people tweeting you, Jason, of course, saying how much they enjoyed the character. And you said then, obviously, Gavin was made as a secondary character. That must fill you with a lot of pride, knowing that people are genuinely upset that one of the nasty people in the show oh, yeah. is going to die. Oh, I was very, very pleasantly not surprised. I mean, I, I knew that some people have already along the way been saying they hope I make it and yada yada and I don't die. And, but then the outpouring of love and affection and, you know, from folks across the world has been wonderful. Of course, there's been a couple of people like, yeah, I'm glad he's dead. I hate that guy. You know, that's just how it goes. And, um, but it's, it's been really, really nice. There's this artist, I think she's in France, I'm not sure where she's from, made this amazing piece of artwork, fan art of me that I've, I've been posting, and it's been really, really nice. The fans have just been fantastic. Of course, you're from Atlanta, Jason, and a lot of the mm -hmm. cast, as you said earlier, they can't get into their bed at night like you. They're not perhaps as lucky as that. Does Atlanta feel like a different place now The Walking Dead has happened? There seems to be such a massive fan base of The Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. Well, the film and television industry kind of descended upon Georgia en masse back around 2008, 2009. The state legislature passed a very healthy film incentive tax plan that many people have been taking advantage of. And that's around the same time The Walking Dead started here, which I'm assuming had a lot to do with why they <laughs> chose to shoot here. But other than the comics, I believe, do, you know, take place in Atlanta. So that helped. Yeah, there's tours. The town of Sonoy, which most people say Sonoya, but if you want to sound like a local, you say Sonoy, has tours every day. There are people who move there who pretend to be Abraham, pretend to be Andrew. Oh, really? Can, oh, yeah. They walk around town and have their pictures made. It's like going to Hollywood Boulevard. You know, they have characters walking around you can get your picture made with, and there's tours every day. The town has really recreated this town and turned it into something amazing. It was a, a nice little town before that, but nothing like this. It's definitely been a boon to the area, for sure. We've mentioned about the fans a few times now, but out of interest, in your personal experience, have you ever found people treating you uh, perhaps as Gavin when you, when you go out in the streets? Do you get a pleasant reaction from some fans? You know what? I hardly ever get recognized. Really? Um, it might have. Yes. You must have the hair down. Well, well, maybe, you know, and the hair's a little different. Maybe I have a hat on. I, do, I wear glasses most of the time. That'll be why. I'm not doing that to try to hide. It's just I need them to see. <laughs> and um, I don't like wearing contact. I usually wear contacts or just have blurry vision when I'm filming. But no, I rarely, rarely get recognized. I've been recognized in public maybe three times. And the most recent time, yeah, we were uh, returning from Pensacola, walking through the airport, and somebody came up and said, hey, man, sorry about what happened to you on Sunday night. And that was about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't get recognized in public a lot. I don't know why. And it's fine with me, because it would be a pain in the ass if that was going on all the time, to be honest. <laughs> you no, know, I, um, I don't doubt it. The show itself, Jason, were you a fan of it before you embarked on becoming Gavin, or, or was it kind of simply because you, you obviously lived in Atlanta and you knew it was going on, or, or do you class yourself as a fan now? Yes, I mean, I, I also teach acting, and one of the things I tell my students to do is you need to pay attention to the shows that are filmed here so that you're familiar with them, you know, in case you get an audition for them, you know what's going on. So when The Walking Dead came to town, I, of course, started watching it the first season and got hooked. Mm. But I was watching it merely because I wanted to work on it, and then I got all hooked up in the drama and the characters and what was going on. 
And quite honestly, I am not a fan of gore and blood. I really don't. Oh, really? Like that sort <laughs> Wrong of show. No, I do not like it. And typically, I'll watch the show tape delay. I'll you know record it on my DVR and watch it later. And I fast forward through some of that stuff. I <laughs> I don't like the squishy, gushy, yucky you know people zombie squishing. I'm, I'm not into that. <laughs> couple more things on the set i know yes, you said you've got a good relationship with some of the actors who's been the most enjoyable to work alongside in your personal experience well i've really enjoyed uh, uh working with all of the folks from the kingdom that i spent a lot of time with and of course it allowed me to get much more acquainted with josh michael we were acquaintances now we're very close friends but it was a treat working with kari payton uh, who played ezekiel we spent a lot of time together and toward the end, I was privileged to spend a lot of time with Lenny James, and he's just been outstanding. Stephen Ogg has been extremely nice. Mm. Xander Berkeley has been extremely nice. I stay in touch with those guys. But if someone had told me five years ago, hey, Jason, you're going to be going toe-to-toe in heavy dramatic scenes with Lenny James in a massive <laughs> television show, I would have told him, you're insane. That'll never happen. And then it did. I was honored and privileged to have that opportunity, and he could not have been a better scene partner, a better fellow thespian. Uh, it was just a pure joy a pure joy working with him. I wish I had gotten the opportunity to work with Andy Lincoln and some of the others, but, you know, that's just not how the script came together. We never worked together on the show, but Mm. we did meet on a few occasions, you know, in the cafeteria. And he actually, I, when I had this final episode coming up, I was a bit freaked out at the heaviness of it. And I was like, okay, this is a big episode. It's my final episode, but it's a great episode for me. And so I reached out to the production company and got Andy's number, called him, and we had a nice long conversation. I said, I'm not sure about this or that. And he just calmed me down and said, you're going to be fine. It's just another episode. Just do what you do. You're going to be great. And after it was over, he was asking me how it went and all that. And he's been very nice. I've got to say, the episode itself as well, and your performance, Jason, it's such a gripping episode. I mean, Gavin really does dominate a lot of the episode. Him and, and obviously the other character that is dying in the show, Chandler Riggs, yeah. playing Carl. I've got to say, I thought your performance in the last episode in particular was absolutely outstanding. Oh, well, thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Now, moving away from The Walking Dead, I wanted to talk to you about a few more things now we've got you on the line, Jason. Um, first things first, as I was looking sure. up some of the things that you've been in, apparently you've been in something every year since you were nine years old, whether that be a play or... More or less. Well, yeah, there's been there. Actually, that's a little bit exaggerated. There, there were a few years there where I wasn't doing anything. And I'll be honest. Around 2004 through about 2008, I didn't do much. I, actually, I, I didn't do anything. I, I had given up on acting as far as being a professional. It just wasn't working out. There was nothing happening here in Atlanta. I had spent some time in L.A. in the early 90s and realized that I was not prepared for that. I didn't have the resume for it or the training necessary and learned a lot, but came back to Atlanta, worked in a lot of theater here around town professionally and non-professionally. And by 2004, I was like, all right, this is a ha- this is a hobby. Find something else to do with yourself. And I actually opened a retail shop for a while. Oh, really? And Yeah, and totally got out of the business. And then in around 2008, 2009, when the film business came to town, I still had my agent, and she called me. She said, are you still doing this? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, maybe. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, I know. She said, well, it's a great time to, to think about changing you know, course again because the, this, there's a lot of opportunity here. I said, all right, great. I'm back in. She goes, great. Well, your pictures are 10 years old, and they're in black and white, so get some new pictures. We need your machine back together. So <laughs> I did, and the first really big break that I got was I booked a role on the, the remake of Footloose. And yeah. I worked on that for about five weeks and worked with a lot of great people, including Ray McKinnon, who I then ended up working with on Rectify. That was really the changing moment is when I booked the role of Wendell on Rectify. Yeah. By complete happenstance, was shot in Griffin, Georgia, which is about 15 miles east of Sonoy, where we filmed The Walking Dead. So small world down there south of Atlanta. Definitely. You mentioned the Footloose remake. Did you realize yeah. how big that would be at the time? Obviously, it was a remake of something that was very successful, but did you kind of realize the importance of that at the time? Not at all. No, not at all. And I was, again, I felt like a uh, world's oldest freshman when I did that. I, <laughs> or it, it was the first time I'd worked on a, a large project. It was the first time I'd worked for more than one day. 
and I was a little unprepared for that as well. Luckily for me, though, I learned a lot. People helped me out. It's not like I was failing or anything. I was just a little bit lost. And again, Ray McKinnon was on set with me a few times, and we sat and talked, and he said, you need to enjoy this. This is supposed to be fun. (laughs) And I did. I settled in and did my job. Everyone seemed happy. There wasn't a lot of work right after that. But then, and it's not because Ray and I were talking in the set of Footloose that he hired me for Rectify. That was happenstance, but I don't think it hurt me by rekindling a relationship. I had known Ray from way back in 19, the early 1990s when I was in L.A., and Ray is also from Georgia, so there was a connection there. And I don't remember what your question was now, but I, about Footloose, I had no idea that it would it would be the beginning of the time. I just thought, well, I got lucky, I got this thing, and if I never work again, I can be happy, and luckily it didn't go that way. It went the way it's going. One thing aside from acting I wanted to ask you on, Jason, is, is looking at your Twitter, you're pretty vocal on, on certain things to do with one particular president of, of the United States. We take it you're not a fan of, of the Donald. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. I, I, I please accept my apology, everyone listening, for our erratic, insane president. Um, no, what's interesting is I own guns. I'm a gun owner. I hunt. and I don't have an arsenal in my house. I believe in the Second Amendment rights in our Constitution in the, in the United States. However, it's not going like it's supposed to, in my opinion. It's out of control, and some things need to change. And actually, yesterday when he made that offhanded comment about gun regulation i was in shock yeah. of course today he's completely he's completely backtracked on the whole thing today which i'm not surprised about at all but yes i'm not a fan of of the donald i think he's as you said you could apologize but i think we'll accept that after 2020 we'll see what happens then oh god yeah bear with us people we're, we're working on it over here we're working on it <laughs> and last thing jason while i got you on the line i want to ask you about a couple of projects you've got coming up you're in only of course and reckoning can you tell yes. us a bit about those two projects yes uh only is another post-apocalyptic thriller film and what's exciting about that is that Chandler riggs will be playing my stepson oh in my that goodness movie. yeah and so i finally got to work with him we never worked together on the walking dead uh, actually we briefly met one day in the makeup trailer that i don't think he even remembers and so it was nice to spend some time with him because he's a very polite very professional and talented young man so that was a treat and that film also has Leslie Odom Jr. and Frida Pinto are the main two cast members, and then Chandler and I. Oh, right. And it was made here in Atlanta, in a lower-budget film made here in Atlanta by a Georgia director-writer, got a man named Takashi Dosher. And um, they're in post-production now. They've got a few more things to shoot, and it'll come out, probably hit the film festival circuit in the fall. They're hoping for Toronto or Sundance. And then Reckoning is also a locally made independent low-budget film, lower-budget film, made by two, a writer and director, husband and wife team named Ruckus and Lane Sky, S-K-Y-E. They and I have been trying to work together for years, and every time we would almost do something, the project would change or fall through, or a casting change would happen, so they were supposed to do another project that they're still going to do, but it got delayed, so they decided, well, let's do this. And so they decided they wrote this script and wrote the part that I play with me in mind and offered me the role, and we shot that back in November. And it's going to be a great little film. It's about, in the eastern United States, there's a a range of mountains called the Appalachian Mountains, and people are called Appalachian people. And this is a true, not a true story, but there are people who live in very small, secluded communities in the Appalachian Mountains in the southeast of the United States who are kind of cut off from society and have their own ways of being and their own rules and their own laws and don't intermingle with outside society. And this is a story about a group of people like that, and it's a thriller as well. And the cast is almost exclusively from Georgia that I can recall. So no famous names in this one. It's a bunch of actors you may or may not have ever heard of. So I'm excited about that. And again, it's going to hopefully hit the festival circuit soon when they finish post-production. 
Fantastic. So some very exciting projects coming up. And that's about it for this for right now, though. That's all I have. With, with Jason Smith, thank you very much for joining us on the line and for that insightful conversation about acting, Walking Dead, and The Donald. Thank you very, very much. You made me laugh. <laughs> My name's Jason Warner Smith, and I play Gavin on The Walking Dead. And you are listening to Raw. <laughs>